folks i have another video for you today and at the end of yesterday's broadcast of the debate of the marian dogma uh, debate with michael harrington and steve christie i announced that i would be doing a refutation of a TikTok trinity denier and so here it is the video is not that long it's only about a minute or so minute 30 seconds maybe um and so if you know the, if you're familiar with TikTok, you know those videos aren't very long anyway but what i wanted to do i did wanted to interact with this video just to give a quick uh refutation of what he's saying because he's saying some things that clearly indicates that he doesn't understand the doctrine of the trinity even what it means um there are variable a variety of things should i say that shows his uh his misunderstanding of what the trinity is and so i want to interact with uh this video but before i do i do want to make sure that you are subscribing to the gospel truth hit that notification bell and the subscribe button so you can stay engaged with whatever the gospel truth has going on you don't want to miss out on any shows any videos any uploads or anything like that uh i would hate for you to miss those things live and so make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell uh with that said let's get into this video because um he said some pretty interesting things and i want you guys to interact with it did you know that the word trinity is not in the bible okay and that means absolutely nothing because the word trinity is not found in the bible does therefore not make it biblical um there are many terms and phrases that we use to describe god that would not be found in the bible uh one of the terms is called divine simplicity which which means that god is not made up of parts right these are theological terms that we use in order to explain who god is or his nature or his essence right um a couple of other phrases uh falls into the omni properties omniscience omnipresent uh, these are also terms that we use to describe who god is and his nature and his essence and we won't find those terms in the bible but i'm sure that this individual would agree with me that god does possess these omni properties and so for him to say because trinity is not in the bible therefore it's unbiblical or strongly imply it does not follow because once again we use plenty of terms that he would probably agree with me in that are not found in the bible but we would consider those things correct attributes of god and the reason that we would say that things are correct attributes of god is because those terms and phrases and theological aspects are implied strongly in the biblical text thus it's safe it's it's safe to use these terms to explain who god is trinity came from roman catholic church are you a catholic that okay so that means nothing as well so because a term comes from the roman catholic church it, it therefore unbiblical perhaps he's implying that which i think he's obviously strongly implying um that doesn't follow because that will just because a term or source or a point of argument comes from a source that you, you disagree with doesn't make it wrong. That's what you call confirmation bias when you only want to use terms or not terms, but sources or yes, in this case, terms that are only associated with your biases and your and your your understanding that agrees with what you want to say. Um, let's, for instance, say that the term comes from a Catholic church and so we use the term trinity and uh it comes from the catholic church that still doesn't mean anything because the term trinity is not derived foundationally from the catholic church it's derived fundamentally foundationally from the scriptures once again because terms are used does not make it wrong if they're biblically founded then we have a case to use those terms okay so his argument because the the term comes from the roman catholic church um is therefore it's wrong is ridiculous it's absurd and it's 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 nonsensical because we use terms all the time that come from different sources and the only correct way to deal with terms and deal with arguments is to not have confirmation bias and use only things that agree with you or are you a christian they taught you that the father the son and the holy spirit are three gods uh, no they didn't no they didn't and this is 
This is absurd right here because this shows one, a foundational misunderstanding of what the Trinity is. I have Catholic friends who defend the Trinity, all right, who defend the Trinity strongly. Uh, you know, I have fo folks from the Assyrian church uh, who defend the Trinity strongly. I have I have friends from from uh, from Eastern Orthodox who would defend the Trinity strongly, and so um, this idea that they teach us three gods is absurd. You got to remember, guys. I host a lot of debates, right? And I see a lot of I see a lot of Trinity debates, and I have yet to come across a Catholic individual that teaches that the Trinity is three different gods. That's absurd. This shows a clear misunderstanding of how this this individual. This individual does not know what he's talking about. At the very, at the very least, if you're going to get on TikTok and make a video trying to undermine the doctrine of the Trinity, at least be able to at least understand it correctly. Uh, the Catholic Church does not teach that the Trinity is three different gods. That's absurd. That's 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 humorous. That's laughable, right? And so this is a clear message. So his argument is off to a wrong start immediately. You know, this this falls in the line with Islam trying to reject the Trinity, right? We know that Muhammad had zero understanding of the doctrine of the Trinity. He actually included Mother Mary in the Trinity. And so that's uh, hilariously humorous. This falls in line with that, the misunderstanding of what the doctrine of the Trinity is. The doctrine of the Trinity doesn't teach three gods. The doctrine of the Trinity teaches that there are three co-equal, co-eternal persons Individual persons that make up one God. Monotheism is what Christianity believes in, right? So that is the doctrine of the Trinity, uh, foundationally. And it's been that way for who knows how long. So all it takes is a simple Google search to find a proper understanding of what the Trinity is. So this idea that he te he thinks that the Catholic Church teaches three gods is absurd. And certainly uh, uh, the, 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 the Protestant uh, a defender of the Trinity doesn't believe in three gods, certainly not. And so this individual is off to a bad footing thinking that uh, the Catholic Church, one, teaches that the Trinity is three different gods, and two, uh, that, that anyone believes this, that any Protestant, any foundational script, uh, biblical understanding uh, teaches this. So this is absolutely hilarious. And they teach that they're separate. Yeah, we teach that they're. I'm not Catholic, so I'm not a. I'm not a Catholic. But once again, I know Catholic guys who teach that they're. They, they, the, the Trinity is not three different gods; that they're three distinct persons. And so I fall in line with that teaching understanding. We most Protestants do. Uh, we fall in line with the idea that the Trinity is three different persons in one being. And this seems to be the big problem is that people conflate or confuse the understanding of persons versus being. There are three persons, co-equal, co-eternal persons in one being that is God. Okay. So if we're going to, once again, if we're going to hold these arguments, if we're going to produce these arguments, try to undermine the Trinity, at least be able to define it correctly um, and be able to represent the Catholic position correctly, that the Catholic position does not teach that the Trinity is three different gods. Um, I disagree with the Catholic Church and Roman Catholicism on many areas, but the I do I, I do foundationally agree with them as they teach the Trinity. The Trinity is three co-equal, co-eternal persons. All right, three co-equal, co-eternal persons that make up one being. Now, if there are uh, if there are Catholics out there that do teach three gods. I di I disagree with them. I disagree with them, but certainly the majority of Catholics that I come across with and I deal with and I interact with, once again, I hope so, I was a lot of debates. I've always heard them defend the Trinity as three co-equal, co-eternal persons that make up one being that is God, the God of the Bible. And so, I don't know, this individual has some uh, explaining to do and he has some studying to do so he could define the Trinity correctly and also represent the Catholic Church correctly. But what does the Bible say? The first commandment says that you shall not have no other gods before me. So his video is flawed now. From now on, his whole video is flawed because his premise is that the understanding of the Trinity teaches three different gods. 
or the Catholic Church teaches three different gods. So the premise of his argument is completely flawed. He has a straw man argument. He has he, he has a complete straw man argument. So everything he says after this, after after that straw man of a misrepresentation of the Catholic Church and what they understand to be the Trinity, uh, now that whole argument is for his whole rest of his argument is going to be flawed because he, he's arguing from a straw man. So it's uh, it's for the most part irrelevant of what he says because once again it's a misrepresentation, and so and he doesn't understand the Trinity, so he's undermining and and, and rejecting something he simply doesn't understand, and so by him quoting Exodus chapter twenty verse three, you shall have no other gods before me. Yeah, of course, of course, uh, absolutely, of course that we sh we shall not have no other god. That's why we don't serve a. Uh, tritheism. We don't believe in tritheism. We don't believe in polytheism. Uh, we believe in one God, right? Speaking from the Protestant position, I'm not representing the Catholic position. I just desire for this individual to represent Catholics correctly. Um, but from the Protestant position, who also holds to the Trinity, um, uh, there is a need here. There is a desire for him to make sure he understands and represents it correctly. Okay, because his argument is flawed. From now on, his whole argument is flawed. So we totally agree with Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. And you shall serve no gods before me because there, there is no other gods we're serving. We're serving one God that make up the, the one God that is three persons in one being, the God of the Bible. The Bible says that you should not have no other gods. Therefore, they're letting you know that there's only one God. And that's what we believe in. We believe there is one God. Absolutely. If there was multiple gods, then you're going against scripture. And we understand that there is not multiple gods. As a Protestant believer in Christ, we believe that there is not um, multiple gods. Okay. So once again, you're, you're, you're totally misrepresenting uh, my Catholic friends, you're misrepresenting me as a Protestant who holds to the Trinity and all my Protestant brothers and sisters out there. So, you know, you're, 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 you're having some trouble, sir, some serious trouble. Because God said you should not have no other gods. The and, and we don't, we have no other gods. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that I am the Lord and no one is beside me. And that's fair, and that's great, and that's absolutely great. Uh, if, if, and we, we totally believe that that is true. And we don't put any God as a Protestant now. I, I once again, I'm not a Catholic, he's saying we, but I do want to represent all Trinitarians here. So when I say we, I'm implying those who hold to the Trinity. So anyone out there watching this video, don't be walk, talking away, walking away from this video saying, oh, Marlon is a Catholic. No, when I say we, I'm trying to represent everyone who holds to a correct understanding of the Trinity. So I am the Lord and there is no God besides me. We totally agree with that. And if you're going to quote Isaiah, why don't you quote this verse too? Why, why don't you quote Isaiah chapter nine, verse six as well? Don't, 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 don't cherry pick your verses, sir. Don't cherry pick your verses because what you're doing, you're, you're becoming a master at proof texting, but you don't understand uh, the full scope of exegeting, right? So in Isaiah 9, 6, it says, for us to a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Who do you think that is implying to? Who, who do you think we should apply this to, sir? All right? Who do you think we should apply this to? This is applied to Christ himself. And uh, he's called Mighty God. All right? So that gives connection to Christ being God. Thus, we have the second person of the Trinity there. All right? And if I decide to go to the to 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 arguing for why the Holy Spirit is God also, then I would do that. I can just flow to Acts four or Acts five, Acts four, Acts five, I believe it is, and I can argue for the Trinity, uh, the Holy Spirit being God as well. And so we don't believe in multiple gods. We don't believe in tritheism. That is heresy. We believe in one monotheistic being that is God. And made up of three persons, co-equal, co-eternal persons. They share the same nature and essence. Okay, and so your your once again your argumentation is flawed, sir. Your argumentation is flawed. And if you're going to quote Isaiah, let's go ahead and quote Isaiah nine six as well. 
because we see clear indication here that Christ is God. This is a prophecy pointed to the coming Messiah, pointed to Christ himself, and he is God. Okay? So if you're going to be consistent, let's, let's, let's quote other verses too. Don't point out the ones that you think fit your argument. Don't be a cherry picker. Don't be a, a, a proof texter. Right? The Bible says no one is beside the Lord. So when you go to heaven and you think that you're going to see three different gods, that's not what you're going to see. And, and we, we, we won't expect to see three different gods. Once again, a misrepresentation. Right? We don't, we, we, <laughs> we do not believe that we're going to go to heaven to see three different gods. We're, we're, we're going to go to heaven. We're going to be in a, be able to ex, uh, experience personally um, the three persons of the Godhead, certainly. And as a believer, I'm already experiencing that. I'm already experiencing the dwelling of the Holy Spirit. I'm already experiencing the relationship I have with Christ. And I'm already experiencing the foundational love that the Father had for his elect. So I'm already experiencing these things. I'm already experiencing. And once again, in our salvation, we should have a fundamental understanding that the Trinity is at, is, was at work in our salvation for those who are in Christ. And it is at work in us for those who are in Christ. We have this foundation. So I'm already experiencing the three persons of the Trinity, sir. Already. Okay. And so when I get to heaven, I'm going to just experience those three persons even more. So we don't expect to see three different gods. Once again, this is a straw man and a misunderstanding of what the Trinity teaches. The Bible says you're only going to see one God and there's no one beside him. And we agree. Thank you. So if there's only one God, then who is Jesus? Well, I just quoted uh, Isaiah 9, 6. So the understanding is that Jesus is God. I mean, I can go into a whole bunch of verses uh, if I wanted to, right? We can all go into a whole bunch of verses here and show that Christ is God, right? We can flow over to the gospel of Mark. We can flow over to the gospel of John. We can, we, I mean, we can look at the Pauline epistles. I mean, it is just a plethora of verses, chapters, that teach that Jesus is God. There's a plethora of verses that teaches that the Holy Spirit is God. And obviously the Father is God. There's a plethora of verses. And so that's how you do, you don't just proof text like this, this, this individual did. You don't just proof text and take verses and say, see, this argues my point. That's not how you do exegesis, right? And so his whole argument was straw man, a straw man argument from the start to finish, because clearly he didn't understand what, what my Catholic friends teach concerning the Trinity. He didn't understand my Protestant brothers and sisters, what they taught, what they teach concerning the Trinity. This was a total straw man argument from the get go. So, you know, if I can get in contact with this individual, I would love to have a conversation with him and I would ask him to delete this video and go do some more research because he clearly doesn't understand what the Trinity teaches. Okay. All right, so what I wanted to do now, I want to get Voodie Bakum here to sort of explain to us the, the biblical understanding of what the Trinity is. And as you know, I love Voodie Bakum. This is my guy, and he has been such a blessing to the church. And so let's hear what Voodie Bakum has to say concerning the Trinity. The Trinity is often referred to as unexplainable dogma. And I think that's unfortunate uh, because the Bible does give us explanations for the Trinity. The fact of the matter is God has revealed himself in the person of the Father, in the person of the Son, and the person of the Spirit. We know that the Father is God. We know that the Son is God. We know that the Spirit is God. We know that this one God has existed eternally in three persons. We know that there is one nature and one essence in these three persons. We know that there is this continuous bond, this unbroken bond of love between the three persons of the Trinity, the Father and His love for the Son and the Spirit, the Son and His love for the Father and the Spirit, and the Spirit and His love for the Father and the Son. It has also been argued that the, Son, that the Spirit is actually the personification of the love between the Father and the Son. And so the Bible has much to say about the triune God. It has much to explain to us about the triune God. Our problem is that we want to think of God as just a mighty man. 
God is not a mighty man. God is God. And as such, he has presented himself to us as the triune God. Our inability to apprehend this is different than saying that it's something that cannot be explained. It can be explained. Most of us just don't like the explanation. And, and obviously, I totally, dis I totally agree, should I say. I want to say disagree. I totally agree with Mr. Vody, what Dr. Vody Bakum has just said. Uh, the, the Trinity can be explained biblically for sure. The problem is, is that many, such as the TikToker that I just critiqued, they don't like the response. They don't like the understanding of the Trinity. They don't like it. Or they just simply don't understand it and they straw man and have a faulty argument because I argue from a straw man position. And so... Um, the Trinity is biblical. The Trinity, the Trinity can be founded biblical. And so I just wanted to share, do this video or interact with this video just to show how flawed people's arguments can be concerning the Trinity. And so the takeaway from this is that one, we should understand what, what is the argument that's being presented here, right? We should understand the argument, the ins and outs of the opponent's argument before we critique it. And so this individual clearly did not understand our position as Trinitarians, those who hold to the Trinity. And so by this individual uh, making these arguments, the whole, it, it just shows his lack of understanding. And so I pray that this video will be a blessing to many and that many will understand the Trinity and why this person's understanding of the Trinity was flawed and fallacious and mis misrepresent was a total misrepresentation all the way through. I pray that this video was a blessing to you. Hey, if you don't mind, won't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay in the loop with the God's truth has going on. Thank you very much. May God bless you and may God keep you.